Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. My name's Connor. And I'm Rebecca. And yeah. So we're back and I figured out the background noise and it's my laptop <laughs> so I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I can't really hear it, so... It, it turns up uh, when I edit, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. It sounds kind of like a fan, and I guess it is because of the laptop fans. Because it's a gaming laptop, so they're always super oh, loud. yeah, yeah, it has pretty good fans, yeah. I yeah. Do. Um, so we're here to do Deadly Hands Kung Fu 20. Yeah. Just recording we're Back with the Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. Yes. Uh, and first, I mean, there wasn't really any news, but Finn Jones did an interview about what, like, the Season 3 hopes were that... Raven Metzner had, and it's, you know, what we already knew is that uh, it would have been Danny and Ward travelling through Asia, and he would have been the sort of Orson Randall-type character, and then the other half would have been, like, Colleen being the Iron Fist in New York, and I think that would have sucked, that part. <laughs> I think it would have been good. I, I, I think it would have been good. It'd be very different, but, look, I'd take over Lin Lee and... yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Um, uh, just uh, especially what, if we had Danny as doing the awesome thing at the same time. With season two, like I just uh, don't I think know. Colleen could carry it on her own. But we'll see. Like I that. mean, but yeah, but you know, I mean, I don't know. It's it's all a what if at this point, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, that's. I just think the... I'd have liked to see it versus not seeing it, but yeah, no, that I that would know. be true. But anyway, that was the only quote unquote news, so. Yeah, there's not been... It's been quite quiet on the Iron Fist front, as usual. Back to that normality. But I think we have the um, the axe tie-in soon. Yeah. Right, that'd be fun. But, yes! Uh, more the, what, is, that, is that the comic I went, I'm not reading that? <laughs> I think so. But, you know, I probably will. But, but uh, if we go back a few years, we have Deadly Hands of Kung Fu 20... And you have Chuck Norris, martial arts superstar, on the cover. Yes, Plus, I hear you uh, got in, tr- in, in. You engaged with his interview. Yes, because uh, I like Chuck Norris. Uh, yeah, I know. I guess. I haven't seen any of his movies, so I don't. I don't care about him as an actor, <laughs> but I like him as a martial artist. Cool. Uh, so that was good. Uh, for those who don't know, like he is legitimate. He started with Tung Sado and some mm-hmm. judo, and he won, you know, he lost some things, but then he won a few championships, he was a kickboxing champion, a lot of karate guys used to go on to kickboxing, and... Like, um, Tom Hardy showing up at my local school <laughs> to, like, <laughs> win some competition. Yeah. That in, uh, yeah. So that's, I guess that's my little bit of news, apparently Tom Hardy turned up at my local school and won this contest. Yeah, jiu-jitsu contest. Yeah, jiu-jitsu. Um, but yeah, the the interview was, you know, it was worth fine. reading. It was good. Uh, so yeah, and then we had the Iron Fist thing. Yeah, which is uh, so the first thing that strikes me about the Iron Fist before we actually talk about the story, which obviously goes straight on from the last one. Yeah, is that logo is really odd. You're right. Isn't it? Yeah, I didn't even it's notice. Like, it's, it's a bit like it like morphs into his collar. That's hilarious. It morphs into his collar with his little head coming out of it, and it's just like I'm really happy they did not keep this this the, yeah, logo. The, the eyes are different. It's just font bad. To like the fist. Yeah, I don't know what it's supposed to be until it becomes his collar. Like it's just this sort of like yeah, it's very strange. It's like a door wedge under the eye, and then. Anyway, I just wanted to point, I know we're not going to talk about things like that in detail, but I looked at it and I went, has that been the the one all along? Because I don't think I've ever seen that. It was not. I think this is the first time. Yeah, I mean, we may get it for the next, like, five, we'll see, but, you know. Mm. See, it does pick up right where we left off. Yeah. 
boy, is this issue weird. <laughs> This it's, is this gets right. Like, okay, it's not just me because I was like, I did read it quite quickly. I went back and read it again, but there was certain points where I was just like going, I, I, wow. Well, it's packed. Is, it's like the last one. It's packed. It's dense. The art's fantastic. It's, it's good action. Yeah, twelve pages, and it's probably like three or four times as dense as. It took me probably at least three times as long as to read a modern comic. The yeah, any I was about to say comic. modern Iron Fist issue, but yeah, any yeah. modern comic, and it's only twelve pages. It was, it was like living weapon levels are weird. Like it was going there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so. Uh, like yeah. I have a feeling these ones will also read a lot better when you can read them all together. Yeah. Because there were lots of bits where I was like, I just want to know what's going on, like, so I can ground myself to mm. read the rest. Um, uh, again, you yeah. can get this in the the Iron Fist Deadly Hands of Kung Fu collection, and also the Deadly Hands of Kung Fu Omnibus, probably the first volume still, mm-hmm. or maybe the second, I don't know. It's issue 20, this one, so... But that stuff doesn't come with, like, the other stuff like the Chuck Norris interviews and stuff like that so you'd have to track down the original issue if you want that yeah. sort of stuff uh, which you know depending on price like might be worth it if you're interested yeah yeah and and probably doable I don't think these yeah. ones are crazy expensive I can't think um, of why they would be I mean be. Carl would know for sure but um, yeah I don't think I think the last time I looked for one it was affordable um well, this is not affordable. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, uh, really? Okay, cheapest I can. F- okay, cheapest I can find is twenty-seven Australian dollars plus thirty-three postage. And this one pretty easily seems to go into like the hundreds. That's probably the Chuck Norris one, right? Yeah, that's weird. I didn't know he put the value up. There's like one that. here for twenty pounds. Because like or best offer. So, yeah, some are some are quite expensive. Some are, you know, none of them are cheap. There's a couple of buy it now twenty pounds. Yeah, but twenty pounds is affordable. It's not like, hmm. um, oh, there's somebody selling sixteen, seventeen issues for sixteen pounds. Yeah. So I put in a bit. I wonder if. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I wonder if that's like if that is Chuck Norris jacking up the price, like this one in the description, so that the. $171 one is Deadly Hands Come Through 20, very fine Marvel Chuck Norris. Yeah, so. there's a this this batch of them doesn't include 20. But yeah. you know what? I might actually. Mm, they have a massive shipping. I'm going to watch it anyway. I mean, I didn't learn anything new about Chuck Norris reading this. Yeah, but like. these sorts of things are kind <laughs> of. things do bump it up. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Special album edition, what's that? Who knows? Us browsing eBay real light, real time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But so... yeah, no, but you know they're 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 still affordable when you when you compare to like Premiere fifteen or something. Yeah. I mean if... Yeah, so that, that was kind of my point, is that like uh you know they're not cheap necessarily, but you could probably pick them up if you really wanted. Yeah, if you really wanted it, it's yeah. not impossible. So, yeah, we pick up. He's in hell, or whatever the hell this place is. No pun yeah. intended. Which um, I'm still not entirely sure about, but yeah. I mean, we're what two of six, so we'll probably find out. Yeah, I, I assume that next time we'll learn a fair amount more. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're, so they're being captured. Again, like, just read this yourself, because it's going to be hard to sort of... It's really hard to express, to explain. We uh, we talk about a bit about time, his, his time in Kunlun, um, a bit about his, hmm. you know, <laughs> I don't know, his... Uh, so yes, yeah, so you get the backstory about Jay that he's trying to help. He's a big fight with lots of goons. Yeah. Um, a lot of flashback to UT, uh, not to Lake Kung. Oh, Lake Kung. Yeah. yeah. So the yeah, I corrected myself, but like he looks massive. Lake Kung, it looks like twice the size of young Danny. Yeah. 
and it's so I and can... they train him. To, oh, it's because it's because they blinded him, and he's been and the flashback is him being trained to fight with the uh, blindfold. Yeah, he blindfolds him, and uh, it's very Slaps him straight away. It's very funny. It's like it's, it's like if you wanted to do a revert, the Batman slap, that would be the panel. Uh. Like I'm just like whacking him. Yeah, I love like it, Danny. He's like try it, Danny, and he's like I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's deaf as well as blind. I mean, it's kind of it shows you that the, the uh, training wasn't necessarily kind, but you know. Yeah. So that's kind of interspersed with what's happening currently. Yeah, because he's been blinded, so he has to fight. Yeah, everyone. so everything's obviously like black and white, and uh, so. There's a little bit of a... I see the back... I quite like that the backdrops... So the backdrop panels are kind of interspersed with the, the main action. But yeah. they're in little, like... They've got little clouds around them to show you that that's the, back, the flashback. But it does make it a little bit confusing. It does make it already busy before the story gets mm. a bit busy. Yeah, because it's just fighting for a bit with these flashbacks. And they're yeah. a bit similar to... Chris, Chris Clement's the same writer here as... The yeah. saber tooth, and I compared. There is a flashback where Lei Kung puts the blindfold on him. Right. He's like a warrior has to use all five senses, but it's like a bit different the circumstances. But um, like it winds up well enough. So, like it's consistent that he was taught uh, to fight blind. So. Yeah, yeah. So you need. Yeah, that's all you need to know is that he was taught to fight blind. Yeah, and it's nice that it winds up. Uh, but yeah, he beats up everyone, and he's like breaking their arms and stuff. And uh, oh no, yeah, he stabs that guy through the arm because he could be a bit more violent and deadly than a kung fu, apparently. Yeah. But, so, uh, yeah, he's he basically takes care of everyone, and this guy can't. He's like Dash of Cards, like, what are you all doing? You're all useless. A guy comes up and he's like, you know, this is the Iron Fist, you know, he's the finest warrior in all Kunlun. And then he melts him for his insolence. So, <laughs> like, uh, like, like some Raiders of the Lost Ark thing, I don't know. It was, uh, yeah, it's yeah. very fun. So there's this, uh, Silver, is it Silver Dragon? Yeah, Silver Dragon. His identity's kind of a mystery yeah totally a mystery um so she fights uh daddy and like just kicks jade in the head which is kind of funny like because dasha khan's like don't harm her and then she kicks her in the head and just to shut her up i guess but uh then she ends up taking out danny uh because he's blinded that makes a point of telling us that, uh, but he does, you know, put up a pretty good fight. Yeah, he does pretty well. Um, and she has a locket from Wendell. Yeah. So. Um, I think, well, didn't, did she grab that off him, or? Yeah, I don't know. It was hard to tell. Yeah, I, I, that's the first part I got confused at. Um, oh no! Yeah, she did grab it off him because he's like, you know, what did you find? Yeah, yeah. And then he orders her to step on the locket, which uh, she really doesn't want to do, but she she does it anyway because he's like, do it or I'll, you know, uh, you know, you're my slave, I'm your body and soul or whatever. Uh, <laughs> she calls him Dreadlord. <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah, which is pretty funny. gnarly title. Uh, so, yeah, then Daddy wakes up back in New York, and this is where it gets, like, really weird. And, like, someone fires something into a church. It's very strange. Um, yeah, even he goes, this is insane, that church is hit by a missile, and they're all... The whole mob is going after Jade again, kind of like we saw in the first it's, issue. Yeah, and it's it's just very confusing. Well, even Danny's saying, like, Ricky doesn't really know if it's real or not. Yeah, and then but it turns out not to be, which is good. 
Yeah, because he kills people, like a lot of people. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we're all like, burn her, and then Colleen comes to help, but then Lee Wing, uh, her dad, kills yeah. her from behind. Which is, like, I mean, you know it's not real at that point, but I, it's very yeah. confusing. I didn't, because this is crazy enough that I would be surprised if you, like... Well, I did do a kind of what the hell, um, but I kind of assumed it had to be not real. And then, like... At that point, because I was like, how do you come back from that? I was, I mean, this story is so bonkers, I was expect like, I wouldn't be surprised if there was, like, resurrections that are going to happen. Uh, would, yeah, well, died, that's true like, as well. I mean... I mean, we have death <laughs> in the, or, like, someone who, or a personification of death or something in this issue. Yeah, it's really confusing. <laughs> like, but I, I like, it, it's still big setup things so we're, not, I, we're I, definitely I, not meant to know what's going on like it's no a, we're definitely i think that's the thing is that we are definitely not meant to know what's going on which is kind of good um so like this priest is like you know you can't just burn this chick and then the personification of death who's revealed to be heather but not heather because danny doesn't treat her like heather she's yeah like, yeah uh but she melts the priest <laughs> And, Which is quite funny. yeah, then we have Colleen coming in and stuff, and then, like, Danny just starts killing people to get to Jade. Uh, yeah, because he's now realising that, I guess, that's the prime target. Well, yeah, that's what he has to do, really. Yeah. Um, and again, Deli had to come through. He can kill people, I guess, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, hooray. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was still a bit surprising, but, like, in a good way. Like, I don't... Yeah, I'm like, I, really I just feel like people, I almost um, want to read the next issue straight away, which I guess means it's done its job. I mean, you could, and then just reread it later no, on. No, I understand that, which I yeah. might do. But, like, I, I'm just saying, it. and also, there's some really great art in it. Yeah. Like, that Armageddon mm. Beast thing is just a great panel. Yeah. This is where, like, when, like, it reveals his mother, mm -hmm. and then... He kicks her, and her face is like a skull. <laughs> it was like, this is really li reminding me of Living Weapon. Um, yeah, yeah, it, there's a lot of that to it. Like, you can see how that could be a definite um, influence on uh, Carrie. Mm. And, uh, you know, I mean, Danny's calling her demon, like, do you yield? And then he starts fighting Mrs. Bones, as I'm going to call her. And... <laughs> Uh, yeah, she says like I am death. So, who knows? This could actually be death. Yeah, who knows? I mean, you know, death in Marvel did traditionally have the skull face and the mm. woman's body. That's why Deadpool and Thanos are so into her. Or like the larger continuity might just not matter here as well. Well, no, but I'm just um, saying that like it has yeah, no. to be a woman with a skull. Yeah, head. it does. It does look so, like a yeah. So, but you're right. I assume this is more pulling on Chinese legends and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> it, it could it could be it could be a uh, there's like a whole bunch of stuff. But um, so you know. Uh, death goes, uh, you know, look behind you, the Soul Slayers come, and I don't know, some weird stuff happens. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I mean, it literally is, some weird stuff happens. Like, he punches through Death's rags, like, she teleports away, and he's like, um, anyway, he's freeing Jade after whatever happens, happens, and he looks and, uh, you know, this is cool. How do you describe the ultimate nightmare? The essence of yeah, all... Yeah, this is such a beautiful panel. The fears and hates that ever were or ever will be. Worse, how do you look it in the face and not go mad? Worst of all, how do you stand against it? Yeah. You learn the true and meaning of... And it's a good of... question. Yeah. And uh, the answer is he punches it. <laughs> I mean, it's sandy. So, yeah. <laughs> His answer is generally to punch it. So, uh, but I'll, I'll finish off. Uh, you learn the true meaning of fear this night iron fist and you overcome that fear you stand still as stone defiant unto death and you focus your chi your immortal soul 
within you until it burns brighter than an exploding star, until the power within you flows into your hand, until that hand begins to smolder, to glow, until it becomes unto like a thing of iron, and then when it has, you strike. And the ultimate nightmare is replaced by Armageddon. <laughs> da, da, da. So it's like a big fairy demon sort of thing. Uh, yeah. and he's like punched it, it's like blown up, or it's like a huge explosion after he does it. Mm-hmm. This is rubble. It's a great, great page. Yeah, so... Again, like, this could be real. Like, it gets really weird, but... Like, mm-hmm. we, we just have no idea. And uh, he looks at Jade. Well, actually, Danny mentions it looks like someone difference. dropped yeah. a H-bomb on the city. He's like, not a bomb, Iron Fist. Only you and those who are dead by your hand. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty... Wow. But, uh... Yeah. So Jay turns around and uh, uh, the Soul s- Slayer, Soul Stealer, actually got her soul. So yep. the Firebird is no more. Unless you get it back soon, the Earth we both love so much, it'll be damned, Daddy, Dan for all time. Damn, you've got to save the Earth. Yeah. So, I think they probably will, but you know, I'm looking forward to the next issue. Yeah. It's way. Um, like, this is so far off his normal Iron Fist run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's so different. And he never seems to do great. any... He never seems to do anything this large scale. No, like, he doesn't get to do this, and he should. He, like, Clement just sort of... I mean, London nearly blew up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, but other than that, it was like... All, and even that was right at the beginning of the run. Like, I guess that was, there was like one was at stake, maybe. Yeah, Can't yeah, remember. a few but, times. But, uh, but like, um, even I mean, like the times when I feel like they want to make it feel like it's this high stakes, they never quite get that across. Like, um, mm. you know, with the what's it, oh, God, you know some of the little short mini events he's led. Um seem like they, they might have high stakes and then they never end up having high stakes. So. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, oh, it's like, uh, it's just, it's, uh, it's good, but it's weird because, again, like, this is, Chris Claremont didn't do anything like this in his run. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he's definitely got one of the most prolific Iron Fist runs, so... Like, it's just not similar at all in terms of, like, what's actually happening. Like, the writing is definitely similar, but, like, yeah, he doesn't... Yeah, the actual... It's like taking this and just shoving it into the street, which it works, you know? When he goes mystical, he doesn't really go mystical like this, and no. it's a lot more traditional, which we mentioned before, it's a lot more traditional superhero stuff he's done with Iron yeah. Fist. So, this is either him... I guess, just experimenting, or just like, you know, hey, you can do what you want, because it's deadly hands of kung fu. Yep, yeah, yeah, and it's and it's good, I'm enjoying it, I'm just very mm. confused by it currently, but uh, yeah. uh, it's just not, it's, it's also somewhat, you know, like, you're used to seeing Danny in one way, and this is seeing him another way, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically just... I'm enjoying the ride at this point. I'm, yeah, yeah. I trust that I'll get some sort of explanation. Exactly. <laughs> or something. Yeah. Um, I've no idea how well it'll wrap up or anything, but it's no, but definitely I interesting. I there will be a story about it. Yeah, it's more interesting than what we're getting. So, you know, <laughs> hey, there's, there's, there's still martial arts. So, yeah. you know... Yeah... Yeah, so pretty cool. And lots of, all. Everyone, like, I definitely recommend it. Like, I mean, definitely enjoying it enough to say go read it. And uh, again, like, for yeah, missing Danny. And, you know. The actual writing itself, like the dialogue and the prose, is really good. It's really good, yeah. So, yeah, I am looking forward to. <laughs> Uh, whatever, whatever's going to happen next. We have death. We have yeah. hell. We have. Set to you hopefully get to see more of his mom. <laughs> yeah. People are getting toasted uh, everywhere. Yeah. Priests, Colleen, 
random people. <laughs> sort out Firebird, get her back. Jade, Firebird. Yeah, I don't know. I'm still confused as to... Oh, no, name. there's two weeks till Axe Iron Fist. Um... Oh, joy. How exciting. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's fine. So you have two... I'm just correcting... Correcting yourselves. Mm. It, it doesn't make me any more interested. <laughs> yeah. But our next issue, Chapter 3, and When I Died. Mm. So again, uh, still doing Heroes for Hire. This is just something that we do, because it's easy to record with just the two of us. Still, we have to come through stuff, so... Yeah, and it's just like, um, sometimes I'm not available when they're doing the other ones, so it's just nice to mm. have to look. And it's one I've not read, so I'm genuinely enjoying reading it, so... It's a little unfortunate it's just us two, because it's the best thing we're covering right now, so... Yeah, and like, and I know Carl probably would love it. Mm. So, um... We can always yeah. do it again at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well... Uh, Thank you everyone for listening. Yeah. Until... Hopefully we'll get on to the next one soon. Oh, thanks to our patrons. Yes, thank you to them. Yes, thanks heaps guys, John and Ray. Thank you very much. And until next time, may your uh, fists become unto like a thing of iron, I guess. <laughs> and cause yeah, Armageddon. Yeah. yeah, just hang out, wait for Armageddon. It's all the design a new logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah better logo. <laughs> Alright, peace. Bye. Iron Fist and all other characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney. Any musical images we use belong to their respective copyright holders. We do this for fun, so please don't sue us. You can contact us at Sons of the Dragon Podcast at gmail.com. Just send us mail, comments, thoughts, anything you want, really. It doesn't even have to be related to Iron Fist. If you don't want it read on the air, though, make sure you mention that. You can also find us on Facebook, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon. Our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast, our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash sons of the dragon, uh, hyphens where the spaces are, our YouTube, Connor Carl, just search Iron Fist Podcast and you'll find us real quick. We are also on iTunes. If you find us there, give us a review and rate us. If it's less than five stars, please say why so we can improve the show. And we're on Podcast Garden in the literature section. And last but not least, head over to our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Artist Podcast.wordpress.com. That's where I put all the show notes. I'd like to thank Thomas Tissot for composing the Iron Fist theme song we use at the start of our Iron Fist episodes on the podcast. I'd also like to thank Peter John Sikorsky for composing the Power Man and Iron Fist theme we use at the start of our Power Man and Iron Fist episodes. And finally, thanks to you guys for listening. 